<clears throat> so, Debayo, it's always nice seeing yeah. your face, you know. Um, always an amazing time when we talk. I, I, I mean, we never get to talk for two minutes. We end up talking for like 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, you know. But it's yeah. always exciting when, when I... When I Um, okay, I think the network is... Can you hear me? I can, can you hear you now. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So, um, I, I want to start out with, you know, saying why we're doing this, um, you know, for people to actually take advantage of this. Uh, one of the key things okay. is uh, the conference we started a few years ago for reasons beyond everyone's, um, everyone's um, power and all that. We have to we have to reschedule, we have to postpone. And okay. we decided it's key that one of the reasons why we're doing the conference is actually to reach out to creatives, get to learn, get to have conversations around the industry. And yeah. um, we decided to move that, you know, to, to this platform. And one beautiful thing is also the fact that because of what, we, what we're doing and the kind of creative we have and we're working with, uh, yeah. we're seeing, we're being able to explore how to cope in a time like this, which for us is very, very key, uh, considering, I don't know, for those who are alive right now, I don't know if there's anyone that's ever experienced any, anything like this, when you don't have control over when you can go out, everyone is scared, everyone is apprehensive, businesses yeah. are shutting down, businesses are closing up and it's it's really a challenging time but you know we we definitely believe that this is a time that we can actually reach out to each other and support each other and also learn from one another so which is yeah. why we're putting this up yes um so this is how we start and yes first thing first um, a lot of people know even if they don't know your face a lot of people know your work you understand uh, trust me okay. people know your work the whole of Nigeria knows your work. Like, what are you saying? Someone that shot some of the most <laughs> powerful campaign, you know, talk of campaign you did for Star, the campaign you've done for Bailey's, campaign you've done for yeah. Firuz, for a couple of coffee brands, you know, Andre, you know. Yeah. I mean, even for fragrances and all of that. So, I mean, some of us have seen those campaigns. We might not be sure of who, who created this material. Okay. But, you know, um, I think... I think it would be great to actually introduce yourself, then we can actually take the conversation from there. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. I don't... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why am I shy? It's, it's okay. You are shy. We get it. We so, get it. It's shy. It's, um, <laughs> my, my name is Dubayo. Dubayo Rotilo. I'm a product and commercial photographer. So what, okay. what, what that entails really is anything that has to do with... Uh, products and food and, uh, you know, all these um, campaigns. So it is, I do more of those kind of, um, those kind of photo shoots than any other type of photo shoots. And um, what else? My, my handle is 1205 Impressions. Uh, the website is www.1205impressions.com. Uh, for those that have the thing, is you just go have a look at it. Okay. Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, I'm sure a lot of us heard most of what he said, but I was losing in between because of the network. Um, okay. Yeah, I was losing a bit of audio in between. Um, yeah. But I think I can hear you. I can still hear you now. And I'm sure you can right. hear me, right? Yeah, I can. I can. It's okay. Good. Fantastic. So now we know, now we know who the bio is. Um, I've, I've, I've looked at loads of your work, and trust me, I am always wild when I see them. Your attention to detail, the way you bring out the color, the way you bring out, you know, it's almost like an experience when it comes to products and still life photography, when you do yeah. them, it's, it's, um, it's fantastic. Uh, but let's quickly go to um, first the time that we have and one of the advantages you know, of being a, a still life photographer. Uh, one of the challenges I think I have in this part of the country is everybody is a, 
everybody is a photographer that mm. I'm trying to use the right word now so I won't offend anybody. Everybody is a, <laughs> is an event photographer. <laughs> everybody thinks about, oh, let me shoot that portrait that will look gang gang gang. Everybody is about, yeah. oh, I want to shoot I want to shoot the 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 concept of this artist. I want to shoot a whiskey concert. I want to shoot a David O concert. I want to shoot this. But you know, a lot of creative loose sides of you know some of the most powerful aspect of photography, which is still life photography. And yeah. in a time like this, when we we are in a less contact environment, um, I think one of the areas of photography that I'm sure will not feel the blunt much will possibly be your area of photography. Since most of what you do, you need limited contact with humans. You, you interact more with the products and then, um, you know, because there's still slight movements, then it's possible to actually be able to get products to you and all of that. So she won't, I, I mean, what has it been like um, um, at a time like this for you as a still life photographer? Well, it's been, we, we've been talking about this many years ago. It's, it's, I, I, oh. I really don't know, uh, but this is the sign, literally, what the whole COVID-19 as, as a whole, it is what, um, it is what I've, it, it has made a lot of people realize that event coverage is not the only type of photography in oh. this life, especially those in Nigeria. Yeah. There's there's a lot that you could do with um, with products, and honestly, this is this is even the best time to shoot because you don't even have to leave the convenience of your home or your or your office or the studio wherever you are. Mm. The, the, what you're going to have to do is you negotiate with your clients, and then you technology has built up that rapport, making it easy for you to be able to communicate with your clients via mm. via social media, WhatsApp, emails, whatever it is. And then you now being able to take uh, your clients will now send their products to you, and then you just you'll, you'll use um, what are these things called again? The dispatch riders to send them to you. Yeah. Work on the products. Are oh, you able to send back? Hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here now. Good. So the, 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 the network, you know, I mean, I lost you in between there. I think the network is pretty, it's pretty it, challenging it, it, there. I lost it, you in between. Yeah. But, um, Sorry? What, I said the network is a bit frustrating, but it's, I oh, think it's fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can hear you. So you know, okay. the client will send the products to you, and you just shoot what you need right. to shoot, and then you give it back to them. In short, there's the concepts that we call the um, the three P's: P, P for Peter. It is basically talking about the you pre-visualize first. That is with the client. So if One the client has something in his head, you can have a sketch. You take your the paper and piece of paper, and then you just draw out a sketch. That is pre-visualize pre-visualization. You draw okay. what, yeah, the the kind of environment where you want to place that product. And then oh, you, the second P is the prepping. That is the arranging of your lights and your and whatever it is, your cameras and the rest of it. And then the third thing is the photo shoot itself. Okay. Now this is also there is something else also that you need to understand as a, as a product photographer, especially the in this kind of times. It is not we, we shoot mostly outdoors with some of the products for, for some of those commercial shoots that you've seen on shoot. A lot of it is done outdoors. But what I would even suggest now is um, many of us will have to up up in green screen technology. So, mm. for instance, if somebody creates uh, an illusion of, or let's say a pre-visualization pre of shooting in a bar, apparently we can't go anywhere mm. now, can we? We are all stuck at mm. home. Mm. So, Definitely. what you need to do is to find a way to shoot that product on a green screen and then Go to oh. all the stock images websites, and then you buy those images from there, and oh. then you find a way to incorporate it. That's super important. Yeah. And there are techniques. Like, there, are, there are many ways you could do it. In fact, I saw a photographer once place a bottle in front of a TV, and the oh. TV had the background. And the bottle was in front of it. So, but when the picture came out, it looked like he actually shot that bottle in that environment. Oh. So these are the 
those are the kind of tips and tricks that people that we are going to be doing in this kind of era now. <laughs> fantastic. fantastic. I like that, and I like and 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 I like that you mentioned something quickly. So I'll I'll quickly chip that in so that I don't forget. And it's the fact that you know you can shoot at home on a green screen, buy stock images, and yes, um, um, you know, create a composition as well. You understand? And you know, which brings me to this very funny. So I'll, I'll take a little digression. So not just products now, it's people thinking about stock photography. You know, imagine someone okay. who, who, who has a body of work that has stock images, how they can easily make money right now. You know, loads of people will be looking for loads of products now and how they can actually take advantage of it. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's just great you talked about it. So for those of you that are listening, um, one way to make money at a time like this using technology is actually to sell your stock photography. And there are loads of it out there. There's even one, there's, there's uh, the few ones are local platforms. I know of Bantu, uh, I know of Bantu Photos. It's, it's actually a Nigerian owned. Hello, I can help uh, you hear you. Uh, network is horrible. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's okay. Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll turn, I'll... Okay, okay. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's Bantu Photos, and uh, it's, one, it's one of those local uh, stock image platforms that, you know, Nigerians can take advantage of. So if you've got stock images, please go on all these platforms and actually register and start selling your stock. So let me come back to that. So, I like the fact that, you know, I, I, I like the fact that you're using so many layers of technology. You're using, you know, conventional technology material like TV to create backgrounds. You talked about green screen. You talked about, you know, yeah. being able to take advantage of dispatch and all of that to actually, you know, still do your work. Okay, so now, it forward a little. Um, we're getting no. into a world, yeah, we're getting into a world where um, phones are doing amazing stuff. So I got this uh, mobile okay. phone, uh, um, fantastic mobile phone from, I mean, fantastic company. They're called Vivo, V-I-V-O. I mean, I'm sure I have to do the advert for them. Yeah. I'm sure I have to do the advert for them, but they have one of the most amazing cameras. Check them out, V-I-V-O. Oh, okay. Vivo, okay. So, Vivo, yes. Um, so, I got this um, phone from Vivo. Um, I, I, I was told to review their products. And um, right. they have one of the most amazing cameras. So I remember a week after I got the phone, I had to go out of town, and then I was shooting in an, on an island on the, on the Indian Ocean. And I decided to take the phone for a ride. So I mm -hmm. saw a few things, and I decided to take pictures of them. Actually, cocktail bottles, cocktail stuff, fruits, and all of that against the background of the, of the ocean. And okay. automatically... The phone popped up a message and said, products, products. And it gave me an indication that it was switching the setting to the best setting for product photography. Yes. Then I moved the phone again to food because I had a couple of vegetables and all that. And automatically yeah. it popped up and it said food photography. And it yes. automatically told me that it was moving the setting to the best setting for food, for food. photography. Mm. And, and yeah. to me, that was, that was amazing. That was, that was super intelligent. That was amazing artificial intelligence at play. So now, my yeah. question is this. Um, do you see this as a threat to your industry? Because if, if, if there are phones like this and can be so smart to identify products, to identify yeah. what they see and define a setting for them, do you think this would be a threat to your own industry at the end of the day? Well, it's, it's a funny thing you, you say that. Hold on one second, please. Gibala. Gibala. Can you hear me? Can you answer your phone or your voice? This is Hello? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Call me yeah. now. It's not my phone. Now I'm borrowing phone now. <laughs> I think. I think. Anyway. I, I think um, the network is really. I think the network is really. I think the network is really challenging, though. Well, Even the network well, itself is bad. Well, well. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So guys, um, yeah, we're having little challenges with the network, uh, which would actually be one of the questions. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so people are talking about phones that have this fantastic AI and able to recognize. So I think one of our conversation was simply because to, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, all right. So, um, sorry, I have, to, I have to disable the um, calls. It keeps coming in. Oh. So um, what oh, are we saying okay. now? Yes, you were talking about okay. the threats of the of those devices. Yes. It's funny you say yes. that because um, uh, the new phones that they make now, all of them, a lot of them have that smart feature of being able to identify uh, what the phone itself is being pointing, what the phone is pointing to or pointing at. Oh. So oh. it sees the face. You know, this is not even new. Even from your own regular camera, you can your oh. camera can actually identify face, and some of them can identify eye. Some identify smiles. But now mm. doing everything on the phone is is I would say is not a threat because mm. it is never about it's never about the camera or the phone mm -hmm. in this context. Mm. It is about the person behind it. The camera itself has always mm. been a tool ever from the beginning. Mm. You understand? Mm. So what they are literally going to be hiring us for uh, is the is the creativity behind what we do. Now, yeah. yes, those phones have a way of you know, increasing the contrast. So for instance, like food now, the salad that you pointed the mm. food at, it will increase the, the vibrance or the saturation on the, on the greens, mm -hmm. you know, and the red, mm -hmm. making it very... But one thing that they didn't put into consideration is the angles that you're shooting it from. The depth of field oh. that is going to be... Uh, how, you're, mm. how do you position it? And that is what clients actually pay for. So they pay for you. Mm. They pay for you. Once they like you, they'll pay for you. They understand mm. because they, mm. they like your style. Mm. They will definitely know that uh, it is mm. not just about uh, everybody is churning out good images these days. But the and that's because a lot of people put their cameras on auto or their phones on auto. Mm. But mm. there's there's something special about a photographer that ha that sees in a separate way. So mm. how best I position the chicken before the chips. Mm. Should mm. I put the chicken first or I put it side by side? Mm. At what angle? Mm. Those are the kind of questions that go through our own mind that no artificial intelligence can actually take over. Can actually take. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So I'm happy. Sorry, I'm happy you mentioned that. So, um, you know, I like the fact that, you know, you mentioned that it's not about the, it's not just about the device. It's about yeah. the arts. So it's about the yeah. person you know, um, um, taking advantage of technology. So, which means that um, technology definitely is not a threat, but possibly we become a threat if we don't know, you know, how we apply technology. I mean, if, if, if I'm right, I mean, that's, that's what my brain is deducing from what you've just said. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not, it's not, I, it's I an added advantage. Technology is, mm. it does add to it. It doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't reduce. It just adds to exactly what mm. we know. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so now, um, I also want to, I also want us to talk about, um, in the next few years, um, yeah. you know, I had to quickly chip this in, you know, with 4G, with 4G going obsolete, possibly in the next ah. one year. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly in the next I one year, 4G. I'm not dropping names eh? about, about 5G, but let's let's go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, you see, because see, I have I have what people I have what people say it, you know. I, I've, yeah. I've, I've decided to read a lot. I've, I've I've in the last few weeks I've been home, which is one of the advantages of this issue of staying at home. In the last few weeks that I've been home, I've been able to read a lot about 
um, um, this technology devices, the 4G and the 5G, and the advantages yeah. they hold. The fact that the minimum speed of 4G, if properly deployed, is about two gigabyte per 100. second, yeah. and it can actually boost as uh, yes, on 5G, it's two gigabyte yeah. per second, and it can actually boost as mm-hmm. fast as 20 gigabytes per second. Which to yeah. me is almost it's almost like Even human being traveling tra- tra- yeah. traveling through technology. Because <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking, what can can the, can the systems can the devices we even have now can they can they can they accommodate such amounts of speed when it comes to technology? So, which brings me to um, technology in the next few in the next few years. So, yes. the point is this. Um, Artificial intelligence is going to play a prominent, more prominent. I was speaking to, I was speaking to Jide Odukoya yesterday, and then he he said certain things, and some of the things he made mention of was the fact that see, what the virus has actually done by locking everybody on is that it has forced technology to grow almost ten times faster than it will have grown, because now okay. people are looking at technological options to communicate. Now, for me, the point is this. Yes, you said, yes, you said, okay, this will not be a threat. Yes, you said, it's going to be about the guy. And I like the fact that, you know, when you're dealing with your clients also, you say you get them to do like a preview of this file. So you create sketches, you create all of this, and then you send to them. Now, okay, so I'm, I'm looking at a few predictions of what might happen with your own specific industry, what are the new things that you think might happen that people need to look out for? So what am I trying to say? A few years ago, I remember when I, when I started out and product photography was one of the things I was able to do. And, um, you know, then it was a big deal. You, you, we even created, we, we, we created a model then. We created a model for servicing e-commerce you know, companies. We we bought this equipment. We bought this equipment from, uh, I think, was it the UK we, or the US? We bought this equipment. So it's almost like a standalone uh, light box, where okay. you can actually have almost a whole human being in the light box. You yeah. know, and then you can actually shoot in an almost um, clean space. You yeah. shoot front, oh, side, back, yes. And, and you can actually send to your client. We, we actually invested in that, you know, a few years ago. But right now, yeah. that's almost as good as obsolete. You know, when you apply yeah. a few technology, you're already talking about the green screen. How easily you can use green screen to create a background that will look almost as if you shot in an actual scene that you were never there. Exactly. Now, yeah. so for me, the question is, where do you see technology or how do you see technology impacting your own specific industry in the next few years? How do you see the speed? Because speed will become very important. When data can move as fast as 2 gigabyte per second, up to 20 gigabyte per second, then we might be living in a much more faster world. So how do you envisage technology actually affecting your own specific industry? Well, um... I'm not sure it's going to affect it. It's mm. like you know, like I said earlier, it, technology really is just it's just assisting, it's just helping us. Do you understand? So we are gonna go the, the whole 4G, 5G matter now. 4G was good, it was fantastic. Do you understand? Mm. And the 5G is just going to make life a whole lot easier. Which means in our industry, we are going to be we are literally going to be talking to our clients in real time. So um, we literally can have, because I, I foresee like a future where there, are, where there will be the, um, holograms of your clients, literally. So we have your, your phones placed in front of you the way mine is placed in front of me. And then I am actually going to be appearing in 3D at the photographer's place. So he's seeing everything, moving left and right, putting, as, as he's turning his head left and right, he can actually see what is happening. And because of the speed of the 5G, that is because those things, the response time of 5G is less than one millisecond, if I remember properly from the research that I did. Mm. Mm. So you, you, 
you you are literally going to be there, but you are not there. Does that make sense? Oh. So that that's oh. the way that I see it. Um, it's it's never going to be a threat. It is always going to be uh, some sort of advantage to, to people oh. like us. So oh. that's that's the way I see it, anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, so let's quickly go into some other new technologies. So, um, I was doing field research, and I know one of the things that's applicable in your field of product photography now is 360 imagery of products. So, 360. Uh, 360. Yeah. 360 degree mm -hmm. images of product. You know, yeah. and, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know where I, I stumbled on this a couple of months back, like months back, you know. Uh, about few cameras. So, you know, initially, when you're shooting 360 degree images of products, you need all these huge cameras, you know, shooting almost every angle, then, then combining all of this into a, a small, you know, file, you know, that can be used for, yes. So, and then I remember while I was speaking to Jide uh, yesterday, it just hit me that, wait, I read about this thing um, called, uh, I read about this thing about 360 images and how there are now smaller cameras that can actually create. Yeah. So instead of you, initially that you have like 20 cameras trying to create a 360 you know, image of a product, they're actually yeah. smaller cameras that are wide enough and you don't need maybe like, you don't need more than like three, four or five of these put together and you actually, you know, create. Now, so one of the things I have been pushing and we've been advocating is adoption of technology and development of technology in our own space. Uh, and what do I mean by in our own space? Instead of us, and I can bet that beyond you being able to improvise, because trust me, I've, I've watched a couple of your videos, how you improvise and use, you know, what's around you awesome. to create and make things for us. Yeah, so yeah. apart from that, I would say that a whole lot of what we use as creative comes from other countries and not here. Now, so this now becomes my question. What or how do you think we can take advantage of who we are and what we have available to create unique still life products such that the still life industry itself will actually become a big deal. Because currently, it, what I see is a lot of things that is obtainable in the still life industry are a lot of things you copy from the outside world. And that's why I like the fact that you said you let your clients review, you bring in materials, you do your drawings and all of that, and you let them see. So what do you think, or how do you think you can actually apply technology in your own way now, as someone on a local front, apply technology to actually develop your industry to create a unique industry what are the things you think you know you can bring in or people within your industry can bring in to actually create hello? that uniqueness for your industry hello can you hear me hello yeah i can hear you now can you hear me okay Did you get i can hear you now it, it, Did I you Let, Did you get that question? No, there was um, it was breaking in between. Okay, okay. So I said, what can, so in what way, or what can your, what can you or people within your industry bring in to sort of localize um, um, still photography, to localize the style of still photography, to localize what you guys use in creating still life photography. Did you get that? What we use in creating film life photography. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, it's horrible. The line is bad. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So can I okay. Can you can you can you call and redial in? Let's see if, if it's from your okay, end. Let me, let me yeah, call and though. redial in. Okay. So guys, um, yes. Okay, yeah. This Fantastic. is better now. Ooh, okay, guys. Wow. 
Yes, we are back in full swing. We are ready. Aha. Aha. Sounds good. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is this. Um, so this is more like an advisory. So what do you think or what do you think can be applied to your industry to sort of localize it? And why I'm saying localize it is this. The bulk of what you get from your industry are... Uh, so when you when you look at scenarios being created and how products are interpreted, um, so except for few stuffs I've seen, maybe someone like you do and very other few people do, most of the way information are interpreted are sort of, if I'm allowed to use the word, a bit foreign. Um, you know, it's almost like uh, uh, mimicking, um, almost like mimicking what you get from how international okay so i don't use our foreign brands interpret their product so um we don't get a lot of we don't get a lot of localized way to which these products are actually displayed for still life product photography so take for instance um let me quickly jump on your site so i'm looking at few materials you did for um couple of your alcoholic beverage clients. I'm looking at a few materials okay. you did for... Yeah, so what I'm saying is most of those products, I I almost lose out on on, on the local part of those products. I almost look at, lose out on appealing to local audience as against international audience. So what, I, what I'm trying to say is that what do you think your industry needs now, you know, technology-wise or otherwise, to actually localize this content and communicate more to a local audience when you create this. All right, see. Did so but wait, let me try and get okay. the, Yeah. Um okay. the, you're talking about you're talking about are you talking about how we create the images using yes, how, 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 how these images are created? Yeah, so how these images are created, you know, bearing in mind local appeal. Oh, I see. Yeah, um, yeah. it kind of goes back to what we talked about it, it, oh. in terms of the green screen in oh. terms of green screen technology okay. Okay. Um, I believe the best way to localize it is to infuse whatever we do in our own in our, in our culture so most oh. of what you probably see on the website will be um, you know very fancy almost almost international kind of looking brand which really oh. yes, it sells it it's it's to a a specified number of people, the uh, target audience. But for us oh. to be able to make it or localize it, like you said, it is best oh. to let the product speak. And I would also say this: um, a lot of our people, when we 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 produce, because there are many entrepreneurs in in Nigeria as far as I'm yeah. concerned, oh. and then they all produce products, make products. Oh. The oh. only problem is they don't put in too much emphasis on the images for their own products. That is why these brands, like um, the big brands, like the Stars and Nigerian Berries, would always you know, use the international standard type of photography to oh. sell their own market. Oh. So what I, would, what I would suggest, what I would say is that people oh. that our, our, our regular self, the regular entrepreneurs that are, because they produce a lot of things, they make shoes, uh -huh. they make bags, they make drink, uh -huh. they, they make palm oil. Uh -huh. All of all these things can also be infused into our own environment for us to uh -huh. create a niche. We, uh -huh. as Africans, we, our, we, we don't have like a specific uh, uh, way that other people look at us. Uh -huh. Do you understand? So if I take a picture in the U.S., for instance, now, uh -huh. you can tell that it's in the U.S. Uh -huh. Do you get? But if I take a picture in Uganda, you probably uh -huh. won't be able to you you'll be scratching so the, the back of your head. Like, oh, oh. Yeah. So now what I would always or what I would say is that we we need to push ourselves more out there. And that is why oh. um that is even part of the reasons why I even started the brand in the first place. Oh. We need to take Africa oh. to the rest of the world. Let us show oh. Africa. Let oh. let people be able to Google images from Africa and then see this premium brand of black people oh. coming together to create oh. something. So oh. I would say that the, the, the power is in the hands of the entrepreneurs. Oh. Let us take this our localized product 
and let us embrace um, uh, the, those three guys in Lagos, those three people that you see that stand <laughs> on <prison. laughs> Welcome to let Lagos. Us, let us you, from Lagos, yeah, let us use those, oh. those kind of things to, to, to create an impression of oh. who we are. So okay. Okay. that is not much of a technology matter, but it's, okay. it's more of an identity thing. We've not even, we, we are not even, we don't even know who we are first. Oh. Once we identify okay. that, then technology is not going to Okay, okay fantastic. Okay, so I saw Mr. Daya did that you're coming. That's one person we should drag him into one of these conversations one day. Okay. So, yes. so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so yes. Um so let's now take this uh uh before before I start pulling questions for people who are ready to send in questions and all of that. Now okay. I, I remember when I was uh, having a conversation with you and I and I talked about the fact that um, we don't think we have enough still life photographers. I don't know if I'm right or, you know. You are and, absolutely um, right. I'm not sure we're, okay. up to, we're up to 30. <laughs> oh, I'm really okay. not sure. I'm telling okay, you, it's, so it's, it's a big one. And, and, and one of the industries that I think, you know, would wait through this period, possibly, and would actually have a much stronger market post-COVID, when a lot of people are scared of direct contact and direct interaction, would be, yeah. you know, your industry, which is the still life photography industry. So, um, yeah. so this is what I want to say. How would you advise someone coming into the industry? How would you advise someone um, trying to make a career within the space? What and what and what would you do? Uh, would you advise them to do to actually get a footing right within your own industry? Okay, so since the since we have less communication with people, physical communication now, everything mm -hmm. is based online. So first mm -hmm. things first, you would put yourself out there in terms of trying to advertise and let people know that mm -hmm. you can shoot products also. Mm -hmm. Shooting products doesn't have to be okay. Let, let's let me let me let me step back a bit. Shooting products doesn't have to be shooting bottles or shooting, shooting products would be anything, right? And oh. I mean, yeah, there are some of my videos or some of the pictures that you see that are really complex. I mean, there was a time I shot oh. a toothbrush with five lights, five, one toothbrush. Wow. And you, oh, wow. you know, it's, it's almost, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy oh. to hear that. Those oh, kind oh, of oh, things oh. is what, oh. it, what that scared people that don't want to make them into venture into product photography. Oh. But to start with it, I would, I would suggest that you even start with the regular e-commerce ones. Oh. So um, you talk to your friends, your designer friends, you know, the people that make shoes and bags, and then you tell them mm. to give you um, your products. And then you charge a, oh. a small amount. You basically create a photo box. Do you mm. understand? Or you buy a photo box. Or if you don't want mm. to use the photo box, you can actually... Uh, set it up. These things are very easy. As mm. far as you can shoot a product, you can shoot a, a human being, a portrait. You literally can shoot a product. It is just oh. a little bit uh, complex when, it's, when you start mm. getting to materials. That is in terms of mm. shooting steel, iron, uh, matte surfaces. All those mm. things are, you because over time, you start life? learning how to... Yes, because mm. So, mm. some of them are highly reflective, while some... Mm. It's, I don't want to go into technical details. Oh, that, right? I get you. Anyway. Yeah, which but, is fine. <laughs> but if you've ever tried <laughs> shooting that, you understand what we mean. Oh, so oh, I would advise yeah. that people start even with e-commerce ones first and just oh. churn out so that you would start having an arsenal of, um, of products in your, in your portfolio. Oh. So oh. then after grabbing those bags, you can now take the bag oh. Oh. and place it in the hands of a model, oh. in the hands of, oh. a, of your your wife, your sister, whoever is with oh, you there, oh, and then oh, try and find a way to create a campaign or some sort of commercial oh, shot from that. Oh, you know, oh, so it, it, there, are, there are tricks <laughs> in getting there, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So okay. that's one way to so, do. Okay. So how about, how about training, how about teaching? Because I know definitely um, um, there's no school of photography in Nigeria. That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people 
learned possibly those who were lucky studied abroad those who, yeah. who cannot study abroad thank god for youtube thank god for online classes thank god for things like that and all that so uh, now let me quickly ask this before i tend to something someone wrote on the on the board so do you do you take advantage of technology to also impact knowledge yeah i know you do few videos i know you yeah. do all of that do you do you have like specific online courses or do you have people come to you to take courses you know just just something yes. for your own industry i have some people come to me to take okay. courses um okay. you know we do like a one on one class okay sometimes i try and gather them to be like 5 or 10 you know before okay. we can actually we can teach uh but for for now it's it's now that you mentioned it um hmm. okay there was something oh. i thought about yesterday oh, yeah okay. let me just say Okay. I was trying I was planning on on create taking some of the portfolios you know some of the things you see on the website oh. and just talking about it on Instagram live on oh. uh, how how to how did I accomplish that shot the oh. answer so it's going to be oh. something called call how we got it or how we shot it this is where okay. we're going to break down each picture okay. and use technology to be able to uh teach people since a lot okay. of them are just sitting at home not doing many a lot of things now oh i think so, i think they should pay for it too i think they should pay for it <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no but you think that, that which you said now end, that, that yeah go on go on in the end we we're, we're trying to get people because there are not many like like we talked about there are not many product oh. photographers if we show them oh. the angle to it that there's more to shooting a model and oh. uh yeah that's you because the truth is a lot of people don't even know that commercial shoots are more interesting in terms of cash wise oh. compared oh. to the portraits that they are all heading oh. towards so oh. Oh. if you if you just show them that yes you see that model that you are shooting on the beach you know with oh. the ini or whatever that she's wearing oh. just play a beer on her hand and then that shot oh. automatically turns from $2 to, to from from let's say 100 naira to to 10,000 to 5,000 naira. Mm. I'm telling mm. you that's that's the way that they got everything you just all about you understanding them. So I want to find a way to just push it out. There are a few of okay. us um okay. we tend to talk si- time to time we we just with each other. There are a few of them. Mm. some of them I think they've even popped up here if okay. I Okay. Uh, is Dish not there? Dish not say hi. If he's around, <laughs> Dish not is another great, fantastic guy. You need to see. Um, okay. We we talk Dish once. Dish not saying hi. I'm not sure if he's there. I thought I saw him there initially. Maybe okay, so Dish not, if you ever here, we say hi. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's uh, it's we're, we're going to be. I'll I'll be using it to teach. So going okay. back to your question now, it's. after all of all this whole post covid 19 thing it's it's something that i'm definitely going to employ oh. you know, i'll adapt it to be able to use uh if not instagram but um for paid ones it's going to be zoom all these other ways of communicating now because you have private oh. networks you have private closed ones so uh-huh. those are the kind of things that i'm definitely going to do okay fantastic so because you mentioned that um I'm going to be I'm going to be going online with uh, Busola Dakolo later today. Uh, okay. She's got an amazing platform. So please for everyone that's Thank here, you. please you need to you need to join that. Uh Busola Dakolo offers a platform for creatives to actually make money teaching and all of that. And it's a okay. fantastic platform. So I I think I think you should I I, I would prefer her to Check talk that. about this more. What you know, yeah, protect the uh i think it's 5 p.m. 5 yeah hours. it's 5 p.m. yeah so uh yeah so please let's ensure you know we do that so now someone said oh the problem with not creating localized images uh are that police if police don't arrest you area boys <laughs> will and that's why we <laughs> well for oh. for me i think for me i think there's always a way around this yeah so What what I think a lot of people do that I find really funny is um there are places you can actually shoot in Nigeria mm-hmm. uh, that will localize 
and police will not disturb you. But a lot of us are actually so used to creating maybe within Lagos. If you ever try going outside of Lagos, I've shot outside of Lagos a couple of times, yeah. and it is in fact people will be willing to work with you. Thing. As in, they'll be willing to do yeah. ev almost everything. I've shot up north and, you know, shooting with locals. In fact, the fact that they see you, they're excited. Ah, camera kit. They are very excited. You know, they, they don't, don't have to be... Yeah, they want to be. They don't, you don't have to yeah. be. So even when you end up giving them something just to say thank you, they are always super excited about it. So I think we should just yeah. explore more. And then explore green screen. You can go to these places... You're you absolutely right about that, um, yeah. about the, uh, you know, the cultural thing that we need to embrace. Yes, mm. Lagos is developed, but it's mm. becoming, I mean, if there's problem somewhere, why put your head there? Go to the okay. billion and one people in Nigeria where you can actually mm -hmm. go and take the shots. So, yeah. um, on your free days, just drive around. Mm. Maybe make it a Sunday because of traffic. But just drive around and see the scenery because i've been i've been around i've been around nigeria i've been to mm. a couple of states honestly mm. if i was the one driving i probably would just stop and just take pictures and continue mm. and then continue the journey but a lot of times it's um there are a lot of there, there are many other places and the more we showcase africa or nigeria itself the more you realize that that picture that you want to shoot on Lake Ukoi Bridge, you can actually mm. shoot it uh, mm. in, uh, on, in, on Ma, Ma, in Ma, Maguduri or, or mm -hmm. Joss or, yeah. or Kano. And they've got lovely places there that you can actually create oh, yeah. such images. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. lots, there's a lot. There was, a, there was this picture I saw, not a picture, it was on the road when I was headed to play two. It was, there was a big rock and then there was a small rock underneath it. How oh. that big rock was balancing on the small rock, on till tomorrow small I have no idea. Wow. And it stood up. Oh, wow. How it balanced, I have no idea. That's, oh, wow. I mean, there have been a, that, that's, that's a beautiful place. We, just, yeah. we are all very, we, we just like, we like sticking to Lagos and just being, the easy way. over there, nobody will you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's always got easy. We want the easy know, way out. We don't want to stress. We don't want to stress. Yeah. And 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 which is which is one it's thing I, I love about someone like Mr. Dayadayo's work. The fact that he's one of the few people who has documented the whole of Nigeria. Yes. You know, right, traveling, right. traveling around, creating content, showing the yeah. beauty of Nigeria, Nigeria. You know, as a country yeah. and as a destination, tourist destination place for everyone who yeah. wants to come. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so. Um, uh, even for me, I think applying technology, like you said, uh, with the issue of the green screen, you can actually go to these places, create those images, okay. and place them as background, you know, <laughs> even on your regular TV screen or your monitor and project it on your monitor, and then you shoot, and it looks almost real, you that's know, in, in, in post-production. So it, 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 let me show you an example. Okay. So for instance, you have, you have this bottle of water now. Mm -hmm. Looking at the bottom of the water, you can see, you can see my hand behind it. Mm -hmm. So whatever you are shooting that is a bit opaque or transparent, mm -hmm. once you place it in front of the TV or the monitor, it actually passes through. So what that yeah, means, it, it is it is very believable that you shot this mm -hmm. bottle in that environment, in that particular space. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Simple. so I I I think I, I think that's exciting. I think that's something.